So in the first visualization, we have a map chart. And with our made-up oil company, we have four offshore fields, Anson, Bedford, Chico, and Dilly. And these are clearly represented uh, on the map chart using the GPS coordinates. Below the map chart, we have a summary table of these four fields, and we can see which business unit they're associated with, which area they're in. So we've got Angola, Gulf of Mexico, and, and the North Sea, and the four fields. We also show the type of well, whether they're subsea or dry trees, and the number of wells in each field, along with the total oil produced since the initial production and the average daily production of the field. In the final column, we see uptime expressed as a percentage. So if we want to look at details about one specific field, we can click on the dot on the map and we see the details visualization below updates based on the marking and vice versa. If we click on a row in the table, we can see how it marks that field on the map chart and hides everything else. So I've got Anson selected and we can zoom in on this field. And we see that these wells are located off the coast of New Orleans and the Gulf of Mexico. And right now we represent all of these wells with one dot showing the field name, but we can also change the marker. Instead of markering by field, we can marker by well. So we see the location of each one of these wells. And if I deselect this row in the table below, uh, we can see that the Dilly field is also right next to the Anson field. Since we don't have anything marked right now, this table is showing a summary for the entire company. So we see the well count and the total oil for all of the fields rolled up. But if we select or if we mark something on the map, we can see how the table below also updates to that individual well. So for this well that we have selected in the Gulf of Mexico, we can see the total oil that this well has ever produced, as well as the average daily production and the uptime associated with that well. So we can use this map for exploratory data analysis to kind of learn more about the different wells just by clicking on them and seeing how the, the data in the table below updates. The next tab shows the production history for the entire company, starting in 2001 all the way to 2015. Uh, March of 2015 is when our actual production data stops and we begin our forecast in April of 2015. So the actual production is represented by this dark green line and then our forecast is shown with the lighter green line. So since we're showing the entire company rolled up into one view, uh, we might want to break that down into individual business units or individual fields or individual wells. So we can do that using a trellis. So if I select area, we see the, the three different areas that we're producing from, Angola, Gulf of Mexico, and the North Sea. So we can quickly see the production between the three fields. Or if we want to take it a step deeper, we can also look at each individual field. So we have four fields, Anson, Bedford, Chico, and Dilly. Or if we want to see the production history for every single well, we can click on well. This would be a great dashboard of the production of every well that you could look at on a daily basis and understand how the field and individual wells are performing. Uh, this might be a little bit too cluttered, especially if you start adding more wells on here. It gets really difficult to see uh, the, you know, the individual lines. So what we can do is use the filters down here to go to a specific field. So if I check off Angola and North Sea, we're looking at only the Gulf of Mexico wells now. And if we want to break it down a step further, we see that there's two fields within the Gulf of Mexico category, Anson and Dilly. So I can check off Dilly, and now we're only looking at the Anson wells. So you can see how quickly we started with the entire company's production history, and then quickly drilled down to individual wells. If we want to see the budget instead of the forecast, we can turn that on. So now the budget is shown as the lighter green line. So maybe we're interested in a specific time period, like we want to zoom in on this section right here and figure out, you know, what caused this downtime. Um, we can use the, the date filters to go to that time period, and we can see how every single chart adjusts based on that date filter. So I'm going to reset the filters before we go to the next tab. And I'm going to change this trellis back to none. So we're looking at the entire company again. So if you look at the next tab, this is the current year summary. So this is giving us a snapshot of our production history for just the year 2015. Our actual production is shown as a dark green bars, and then our forecast starts in April, and that's shown by the lighter green bars. And we're always comparing our production, the actual production plus the forecast to our budget. 
So the budget was set uh, at the beginning of the year, and that's what we communicated to our investors on Wall Street. Um, but the forecast can be updated more often, either monthly or quarterly. The forecast and the budget are not necessarily the exact same thing. And if we look at the legend in the top right, we can see these three different series, the actuals, the budget, and the forecast. The bottom graph is showing the difference between the budget and the actuals or the forecast. Since this scale goes from 0 to 130,000, it can be really difficult to, to kind of estimate what this difference is between the, the budget and the actuals. And we might want to know like exactly how big that variance is. So I've created this chart below that shows the difference between, between the budget and the actuals, and it's representing it as a bar below. So the months of the year line up, and we can see for each month uh, what, is, what the variance is. So January, we have a variance of about 10,000, and in February, it's a little bit less. And then in March, it's actually a positive variance where we produce more than budget. So having these two charts in combination makes it really easy to see which months are performing good compared to budget and which ones we're doing not so good. So just like on the previous chart, we can use the trellis to break it down into different business units, type of well, area, or field. So I'm going to click on field, and we can see our four different fields. So we can see how each field is performing. And you know, immediately we see uh, also the relative performance of each field. So Bedford and Chico by far are the best two fields, and then Anson and Dilly are producing about the same. And again, we can see the, the variance to budget for each field. So before, if we go, if we check back uh, to the entire company, we see that there's a large variance in January, but we don't really know what's causing that variance until we start drilling down into the different fields. So when we, when we look at this view, we can see that most of this variance is caused by the Bedford field. And for some reason, we produced well below the budget uh, for the first two months. If we wanted to take a closer look at that, we can drill down to the Bedford field which is in the North Sea. And then we can trellis this by well. And we can see all of the wells associated with the Bedford field. And if we look at them individually, Alpha 1, Alpha 2, and Alpha 3 are all performing very well compared to budget, which we can see up here, as well as on the, the graphs below. Uh, but something happens with Alpha 4 and especially with Alpha 5. So that, that variance at the beginning of the year for the entire company was primarily driven by the Alpha 5 well, and we were quickly able to get to that answer in just a few clicks. Okay, so I'm gonna reset the filters and reset the trellis back to none, and go to the next tab, which is year-to-date performance. So to this point, we've been looking at time series, and now we're gonna to switch to a well-by-well -well analysis. With these set of charts, we can see the relative performance of each well year-to-date on an average daily production basis. So each well is represented as an individual bar. So we're showing the average daily production for each well. So you can see that the Bedford wells are by far the best performing, followed by Chico and then Anson and Dilly are about the same. This is comparing the variance to budget. So if the year ended today, this is showing you how much over or under budget you would be. So since our actuals are through the month of March, this is showing us like a snapshot of uh, the first quarter, how we've performed. So we can see that most of these wells are actually producing below budget. and Again, this uh, Alpha 5 well is the biggest offender. So just looking at this chart by itself, we're not able to determine if this negative variance is caused by poor well performance or poor uptime. And on the bottom graph, we're coloring it by the uptime percentage, and we're grouping this into three different sections. So if the bar is green, then that means that it, its uptime percentage is between 80 and 100%. If it's yellow, that means it's between 50 and 80%. And if it's red, which is a big problem, it's between 0 and 50%. So if it's 50% uptime, then that means that on average, this year, the well has only produced half the time. We see that these, these wells that are performing significantly below budget, uh, the reason why primarily is, is that they have low uptime. Since all of these wells are lined up, we can see the production, the average daily production, the variance to budget, and then the uptime percentage. So viewing all of these parameters on one screen makes it really easy to help diagnose what the problem is. We don't have to click around between multiple screens. We can see it right here. The filters work the same way in these set of charts as the previous ones. So if we'd want to look a little bit closer into that Bedford field, uh, we can uncheck Angola and Gulf of Mexico just to see these up close. And if you look back at the legend, we can see that the data table names. So this is the combo table, combo table, and prod data. Uh, so those names are insignificant, but it's showing that we're combining data from multiple tables on the same page. And if I click on one of these bars, the marking is shared between the data tables. 
which is really useful for pulling in data from multiple disparate data sources. We can combine them into one single analysis, which helps to provide context. The final tab is the production heat map. And this is a way to show the production history of each well individually, but fit everything on one screen. The heat map shows data in three different dimensions. So we can see on this y-axis, we have the fields in the well. So each one of these rows is representing data from one well. And on this upper x-axis, we have the production date. So starting back in 2001, when we first started producing, all the way up to 2015, which is today. And then the values that we're showing is the, the oil production. And we're coloring these based on the relative performance. So the darkest shade of green represents the highest production. So the top 5% of the production history and the lightest shade of green represents the lowest production values. So we can see very quickly that uh, when the wells perform their best early on in their life, the gray areas represent zero production. So we can quickly spot when we have some major downtime and we see some big chunks of downtime here. And then we can see uh, some of the wells that have never really performed poorly. So these wells in the North Sea, relatively new, uh, always have been very strong. Normally you'd look at production history with line charts, but it would be impossible to show all of those wells at once onto one screen, since all of those lines would be crossing each other. So this is a way to kind of organize things very concisely. So you can look at the entire production history for all of the wells in the company on one screen. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this demo. I'd love to hear your feedback, so please share any comments or questions you have. Cheers.